What's up, everybody? It's me, Chris. I'm here to talk about the fights coming up this weekend on HBO After Dark. Um, first up, we have uh, Chris Ariola against Travis Walker. Um, Ariola is 25 and 0 with 22 KOs. He's coming off a third round TKO over um, Garcia, a fight that was showed on uh, Versus Network. Uh, before that, he had a third round DQ win over Chaz Witherspoon. The way that fight ended, Witherspoon's corner jumped on the uh, apron. They thought the round was over. But it wasn't, so he got DQ'd. But Witherspoon was hurt, and it looked like he was about to get TKO'd even though the round ended. It looked like uh, Ariola was on his way to winning that fight by TKO, most likely in the next round if it would have continued, which was a good win for him. Those were both the uh, upcoming heavyweight prospects, and still are. Uh, as for Travis Walker, he's 28-1 and 1, 22 KOs. Uh, his last one was a first-round TKO over some la guy's last name is McDaniel. Um, never heard of him. Uh, before that, he had a second round TKO win over TJ Wilson, which was a rematch. That fight was on uh, Showbox, I believe. Um, I saw it. It was a rematch the first time they fought. Wilson caught, hurt Walker early in the fight. Um, a barrage of punches followed, and the ref stopped the fight. Uh, Walker thought it was kind of early, too early of a stoppage, and apparently so did some other people because they had the rematch. And in the rematch, Walker won impressively with the second round TKO, and it was non controversial. He hurt Wilson and finished him off. I think I believe he knocked him down a couple times as well in the process. Uh, either way, so, Ariel's last fight was basically just a tune-up slash warm-up fight to get him ready for this. Um, the biggest factor into this fight, for me, I mean, I, I, my, I'm picking Ariel to win. Um, I'm not sure if I... I think I'm going to pick him to win by TKO. I'm not sure, like, I'm not going to call around or anything, though, but, uh... Um, I just... It depends on what shape he comes in. He came in 20 pounds heavier from his last fight than his previous fight, and there was no need for it. I don't know if it was, um, excessive eating, drinking, just not in the gym, not putting in as much road work, um, because he didn't feel the opponent was a threat. Either way, he definitely needs to uh, train harder for this fight, because it should be a tougher test. Um, he's been pretty impressive so far, you know, he's a, likes to pressure guys, throw a lot of punches. He doesn't have, like, a lot of, uh, one-punch power, but he kind of just batters people around and wears them down. Um, I have seen Walker, aside from those Wilson fights, I believe I might have seen him a couple other times either on Showbox or on ESPN2. Um, I haven't been overly impressed. I mean, the guy's got a good record. I'm not saying he's a bad fighter. I just haven't seen anything great out of him that makes me think he's going to be a future champion just yet. Um, so this fight should determine, you know, who's going to take the next step in their career. Because uh, once again, there's two up-and-comers. Ariola is the favorite, however, and I do expect him to win. Um... Walker, as I said, in the first J.J. Wilson fight, he got stunned. Wilson was all over him. You know, I think Ariola will probably do the same thing. I think he's going to pressure him. He might be able to hurt him. If not, I just think he'll maybe outwork him. I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, you know, because I haven't seen neither of these guys against the greatest opposition just yet. But I'm going to go with Ariola. Like I said, probably a TKO. I mean, Walker was stunned by Wilson. I don't know what kind of power Wilson does or doesn't have, but... I just think Ariola is going to be able to um, keep the pressure on him if he's in good shape. Um, hit a, land a lot of big shots, you know, get him in the corner. And I think it'll just, the accumulation of punches will catch up with Walker. But, you know, this isn't the most thorough analysis for this fight because I haven't seen that much of Walker, to be honest. But I'm just going to go with Ariola, like I said, by TKO. Uh, next fight, we got the, for the IVF 154-pound title, which would be super welterweight or junior middleweight. We have uh, the Paul Williams moving up in that division, or moving down from his last fight. Uh, he's 35-1 and one against um, Verno Phillips, who's 42-10-1, and one, and Verno Phillips is the champ. In Williams' last fight, he fought at 160, I believe, at middleweight. He got a first-round TK over Andy Cole. Uh, that was also on versus. It was on the same fight that the same night that the Chris Arola fight aired. Uh, he looked really impressive at that weight. Um... He looked stronger. He looked just as fast. Not really much to say about his opposition that night, but still, he looked good. Before that fight, he had the rematch with Carlos Quintana, um, which he got a first-round TKO in. He had lost the first Quintana fight on a decision. Um, he didn't He didn't look like the normal Paul Williams. He got hit a lot. I mean, he gets hit a lot. But um, he just didn't have a lot of sustained offense against Quintana, as he normally does. But uh, in the rematch, he pretty much... Uh, I mean, you could tell by first round TKO, if you didn't see the fight, he completely changed the results. He said he felt better going into the second fight, and he showed it. 
And that's from Bruno Phillips. His, uh, he won the title that's being defended here uh, in the split decision over Corey Spinks. I didn't see this fight. It did air on uh, the internet. It was Don King. It was a free web show, but I didn't watch it. Just not a big fan of Spinks or uh, Phillips. And um, before that, uh, Bruno Phillips was on a presser roll. He had wins over uh, Julio Garcia. Um, hold on, let me check this out real quick. Julio Garcia, Eduardo Sanchez, Teddy Reed, uh, JC Candelo. Um, but before that, he lost to Ike Corte and he lost to Kasim Uma. But since those fights, he'd been on a little impressive role and he beat Corey Spinks for the title. Which is, you know, impressive because Spinks, you know, he's got good boxing skills and he's held that title a couple times at that uh, weight class. So um, I'm going to go with Williams here by decision. Um, Williams, like I said, looked good in his last fight, which was almost at middleweight, 160. So going down to 154, he should look really good at that weight. I mean, he looks good at welterweight, which is 147, even though he's really skinny for the weight. So I think putting on the extra weight's only going to help him. It's only going to be beneficial for him because he, he is really tall and skinny for the welterweight class. Um, Phillips, is he's a pretty good fighter. I wouldn't say he's elite by any stance. Um, I don't really know what Phillips... You know, he's not a very powerful puncher. He's not the most skilled boxer. He's kind of a guy. He's not top tier, but he could beat a lot of the. He could beat like not the best, but the best of the rest, so they say, or as the saying goes. I think the biggest factor in this fight is going to be the height and reach. Um, Williams is six foot one. Phillips is five foot seven, and Williams has an 82 inch reach, and Phillips has only a 69 inch reach. So, I think that's going to be a huge detriment to Phillips. Um, I think Williams is going to probably keep the fight on the outside. Use his jab, throw a lot of the, throw a lot of his uh, long range punches, which uh, he can get good power on, especially at the elevated weight. I think he'll be able to get more power on him. Uh, Phillips, I don't really know what his game plan would be. I would assume it'd be to get inside, maybe try to hit Williams with a lot of counters, fight someone in the way Quintana did, although he just doesn't have the same skill set as Quintana. He's a he's a different boxer than Quintana is, but I just don't think he's going to be effective enough. I don't think he's got, you know, enough tools. Or I just think he, he doesn't really have anything that he's going to be able to defeat Williams. Williams could take a good punch, as he showed in the Margarito fight and the uh, Quintana fights. He got hit flush a bunch of times. He takes a good punch. Um, he's got the advantage in speed. He's got the advantage in, I don't know about strength. Um, we'll see. But skills, pretty much everything. So I'm going to go with Williams by decision because Phillips is a very game guy. He's a tough fighter. He's been around for a long time. He doesn't get stopped a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to go with Williams by decision. It means he's a champ at 154 and 147. Um, it'll be interesting to see where he goes from there if he does win the title. But um, who knows? We'll see how he looks at 154. Though I'm, I'm expecting an impressive performance from him. So I'll probably hit you guys back on Sunday. What you let you know what I thought of the fights afterwards. But um, until then, once again, I'm out of here. Bye.